there is a, an emotional drift. Everyone say emotional drift. And, and it's something that doesn't come suddenly. It's something that is gradually. You know, the Bible tells us that the enemy is very subtle. And, and the things that are so subtle, I mean, we're seeing things really being exposed heavily. But they're behind the scene of the things that are being exposed heavily is actually a distraction for something subtle to come in. And in and, and this, this is where the enemy's strategy, and the Lord said, I'm revealing the enemy's strategy right now, so don't focus on the things that are so evident. He said, those things that are evident are nothing but distractions. We have to be careful because there's an emotional drift that comes that is very subtle. And, and you don't even know it. But it begins to drift, 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 drift. And, and we begin to sway and drift and don't even realize it. And, and it's an emotional one. In Hebrews chapter 12, in verse 25. We don't want to be distracted with the things that are so evident. You know, we, we must be more sensitive to the things that are more subtle. In verse 25 in Hebrews 12, he says, See that you do not what? Refuse him who speaks, for if they did not escape who refused him who spoke on earth, much more shall we not escape if we turn away from him who speaks from heaven, whose voice then shook the earth, but now he has promised, saying, yet once more I shake not only the earth, but also the heavens. Now the heaven he's talking about is Satan's realm. He doesn't need to shake his own kingdom, hello? He's shaking the heaven, the, the second, we call the second heaven, and that's where Satan's kingdom's at. Now this, yet once more, indicates the removal of those things that are being shaken as of the things that are made, that the things which cannot be shaken may remain. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us have grace by which we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. Reverence and godly fear. For our God is a consuming fire. One of the shakings is to expose all wickedness in humanity. Every life that's in this place will be shaken. Amen? We're all being shaken no matter what. Every life in humanity is being shaken right now. Whether you're paying attention to it or not, you're being shaken. And the ones that are not paying attention will totally fall and crumble. But the ones that are paying attention, it's because the shaking should be awakening them. Amen? But many people are being shaken and still asleep. But this is expose all wickedness in humanity. God is trying to cause man to hear him. He's trying to cause man to what? Hear him. Because there's so much distraction, there's so much, the voice of the enemy is so loud out there. <clears throat> it's all over the place. And it's causing much distraction. But the voice of the enemy that speaks loud is nothing but distraction. Because there's another subtle voice of the enemy that causes an emotional drift. It puts a desire of emotional drift. In Hebrews chapter 2, verse 1. Therefore, we must give the more earnest heed. In other words, we must hear these to the things that we have heard, lest we what? Drift away. Emotional drift. For if the word spoken through angels proved steadfast and every transgression and disobedience received a just reward, how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord, and was confirmed to us by those who heard him. God also being witness, bearing witness both with signs and wonders, with various miracles and gifts of the Holy Spirit, according to his own will. 
for he has not put the world to come of which we speak in subjection to angels. But one testified in a certain place saying, what is man that you are mindful of him? Or the son of man that you take care of him? You have made him a little lower than the angels and you have crowned him with glory and honor and set him over the works of your hands. You have put all things in subjection under his feet. That's, he's talking about me and you. So he's already given us the authority. He's putting in, in other words, we're to be putting into practice the things that we have learned, avoiding any emotional drift from the truth. See, the enemy's ploy is to, he knows that emotion is man's greatest weakness. Lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, pride of life, it's emotion. That's man's weakness. That's humanity's weakness. But we have dominion over that. We have dominion over those emotional drifts or those emotional draws. So don't, we don't fall into that. We don't bite the bait. We don't get distracted. In other words, we are alert to these things that employ the enemy. You know, they, um, it, it, it's like, you know, uh, um, in, the, in the military, in, in war zones and everything, they use children. So a soldier's out there, and there's a little child there saying, help me, help me, help me, and the kid's strapped to a bomb. And the soldier, out of emotion and care, goes over to this child, and they both blow up and die. This is where you and I need to have discernment. And it all can be given by the Holy Spirit in relationship. Does everybody get this? This is where it takes practice in the relationship. This is where the Spirit is telling us things to come. The anointing tells you things to come. This is where God is shaking everything. He's trying to remove us from those things that cause us emotional drift or expose those emotional drifts. You know, after we've come out of a life of corruption, amen, amen, and we begin to live a life of justice and righteousness, the enemy's always bringing from your past the things in one way or another or something that reminds, and there's, all, and there's an area of regret. Amen. Gosh, if I would have done this, things would have been different. You know, I, I, those are emotional drifts that we have to be very careful about. That doesn't mean they won't come. It's what we do with them. That's the vital thing. And that we're to be alert of these things that are happening. Look at how many people are taken captive. They are bound emotionally, globally. They're running to go get. They're running to the doctors. They're running to go get pills. Because of the area to where they're afraid. Fear is the greatest emotion that brings destruction. Amen. Amen. And fear does nothing but protect self, protects pride. The Bible says that perfect love casts all fear, but you can't have that perfect love without a true relationship with the Lord. You can have a fake one, long distance one, but you ain't going to have that true love. And fear will always be your enemy. They'll always be knocking on your door. There'll always be a what if, what if, what if. Hello? Praise God. First John chapter 5, verse 18. We have a tendency as uh, still human, unfortunately, to have a worse first thinking. <laughs> you know? That what if, the enemy knows, man, you know. <laughs> you sneeze and, oh, my God. You know, the enemy's going, man, you're going to die tomorrow. Oh! You know, <laughs> you know something terrible is going to happen. That's the area of the emotional drift. He's trying to get your attention for distraction with emotional drift. We know that whoever is born of God does not what? Does not sin does not sin. Hmm. 
Whoever is born of God does not react to emotional attacks. <laughs> they respond to them. There's a difference. But he who has been born of God keeps himself. Hello. He keeps himself. He's protected. He keeps himself. Well, how do you keep yourself? Because you know what's getting ready to happen. You know the truth. You're keeping yourself from reacting so that you stay in a place of life of responding. And you respond according to God's ways. And this says, and a wicked one does not touch him. If you respond, the wicked one doesn't touch you. If you react, he will. He's already got a hold on you. Amen? We know that we are of God and the whole world lies under the sway or the drift of the wicked one. And we know that the Son of God has come and given us an understanding that we may know him who is true and we are in him who is true, in his Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. Little children, keep yourself from idols. Idols are emotional things. Things that people love. Hello? Keep yourself from idols. Again, to be born of God, you don't, you're not, you don't react to emotional attacks. The whole world system lies under the emotional drift of the evil one, causing division, strife, outbursts of wrath. Their words plant corruptible seeds they are living a life of survival and not surrender. They are protecting their emotional deceptions, not willing to expose them due to pride and shame. You know, some people just, they're afraid of being ashamed. It's called humility. There's nothing wrong with shame if you've blown it. Amen? But you don't let shame beat you up. We've all felt shame at some time. But then after the healing comes, it's used to train us. Amen? 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 10. But you have... Carefully followed my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, love, and perseverance. Persecutions, afflictions, which happened to me at Antioch, Icam, and Lystra. What persecutions I endured, and out of them all the Lord delivered me. Yes, and all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution or attacks. But evil men and impostors will grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But you must continue in the things which you have learned, putting them into practice, and been assured of it, knowing from whom you learned them, and that from childhood you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and, proof, and, and is profitable, for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man and woman of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. So the Word of God is going to equip you. If you don't know the Word, you're going to not going to be equipped. Amen. So it's vital to know that. Again, evil people, imposters, being taken captive by emotional drifts of persuasion, further into darkness and blindness, and, and begin to have being false perceptions of things. They actually believe their own lies now. They're so convinced of their own lies. And these demonic spirits have taken them captive. In Philippians chapter 2, verse 12. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with what? Fear and trembling. That's the fear of the Lord. Reference. For it is God who works in you both to will and to do his good pleasure. Do all things without what? Complaining, disputing, grumbling, that you may become blameless and harmless children of God 
without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation among whom you shine as lights in the world, holding fast the word of life so that I may rejoice in the day of Christ that I have not run in vain or labored in vain. <laughs> See, many people are not willing to work out their freedom or their own salvation or their freedom from emotional drift, from compromise, laziness, complacency. They fall into a, the emotional bondage. They're not willing to fight. They want people to fight for them. But you must fight for you. Amen? There's nothing wrong with fighting for others in prayer and su supplication. But the Bible says if there's something you need, pray. You go pray. You go fight. Amen? Because if you can't fight, then you can't advance. And if you're not willing to learn how to fight, then you'll become a casualty of war. You'll always be one that drifts from emotion. You'll be easily offended. You always use the rejection scene. Oh, nobody loves me. That's when we need to slap the hell out of them and make room for heaven. Amen? It's like, stop it. Man up, woman up, grow up. Nobody loves me. Put yourself in front of the cross. Somebody loves you. 1 Corinthians 9, 24, please. Do you not know that those who run a race all run, but one receives the prize? Run in such a way that you may obtain it. And everyone who competes for the prize is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a perishable crown, but we for an imperishable crown. Therefore I run thus not with uncertainty. Thus I fight not as one who beats the air. <laughs> but I do what? I discipline. Everyone say discipline. What word is in discipline? disciple hello I discipline my body my flesh and I bring it into subjection lest when I have preached to others I myself should become disqualified Wow. <laughs> discipline self-control control over emotion hello an individual that has dominion over emotional drift Go to the book of Jude. You know, the, uh, people are battling over so many emotional things and trying to prove their desires. Even if it's wicked. You know, we had Pride Month or Pride Week or whatever it is. I guess they should, they should read the Bible. It says that God rejects the proud. Hello? <laughs> but he gives grace to the what? Humble. These people are demonized. We love the individuals, but they have demons. Those spirits are perverse spirits that they carry. And they carry a desire. They are emotionally, easily emotionally drifted all the time. They're trying to live a man and woman marriage, and they can't. Because they are emotionally drifted. They're trying to prove their emotional desire. To prove to the world that they can live the same kind of a life as a normal marriage. And they can't. It's impossible. Does everybody get it? It's impossible. Those are nothing but demonic influence and spirits and individuals from the Nephilim race that have taken control of these individuals. And when they truly come to the truth and get delivered, their lives change. But they must want to be delivered. There must want to be an area living right before God. You cannot proclaim to live a perverse life 
and proclaim to be a Christian. It's impossible. Because Christian means Christ-like. That's where the great deception is. My heart hurts for these individuals because of how deeply taken into darkness they are, blinded, and constantly drifting in an emotional state of being. When I was in the world, I had friends that were gay and so forth, and they weren't cheerful. They lived a life of addiction. But at that time, I, didn't, I could care less because I was not a believer. I was a heathen. My only focus was the area of their operations of distribution of drugs and so forth and whatever. But man, their life together was a constant battle. What they showed out in front and what they showed behind closed doors was a constant battle. It was difficult. Because it was an emotional battle. It was always an emotional battle. Very offensive, high strung, smart. But again, it, it, it's that emotional attack within all the time. In Jude, verse 16, these are grumblers, complainers, walking according to their own lusts, and they mouth great swelling words, flattering people to gain advantage. But you, beloved, remember the words which were spoken before by the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, how they told you that there would be mockers in the last time who would walk according to their own ungodly lusts. The lust is the desire, isn't it? These are sensual persons who cause divisions, not having the Holy Spirit or having a relationship with the Holy Spirit. But you, beloved, building yourselves up in your most holy face, praying in the Holy Ghost, which means tongues. Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ who, unto eternal life. And, ha and some have compassion, and some making a distinction. But others save with what? Fear. Fear. You know, sometimes you're going to have to tell somebody, man, if you don't change the way you're living, you're going to wake up in hell. You can't live that way. You know, you have to ask them, is the way you're living pleasing God? If the way you're living is pleasing God, you're okay. But if you can be honest with yourself, and the way you're living is not pleasing God, and you're one breath away from hell. Amen? But others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire of hell, hating even the garment defiled by the flesh. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to God our Savior, who alone is wise, be glory, majesty, dominion, power, both now and forever and ever and ever. Sensual, cause divisions, not in relationship with the Holy Spirit. Preventing return to a full relationship because of the bait of emotional lust or drift constantly battling them. See, they want to have a relationship, but that emotional drift, that emotional desire keeps pulling them back, interfering all the time. It's that emotional drift. How many times when we were out there and we were saying, man, I need to get right, but that emotional desire to use drugs again. Um, or maybe tomorrow. Man, you need help. I know I need help. M maybe tomorrow. How about this afternoon? Yeah, come back later. Amen? Everything to avoid, not even knowing how, why we were avoiding it. It's just that emotional draw and that drift constantly drawing us. And preventing us from really stepping into that place where there's freedom. Hallelujah. Go to Judges 16, verse 4. Afterward, it happened that he, he loved, fell in love with a woman in the Valley of Sirach whose name was Delilah. 
And the lords of the Philistines came up to her and said to her, entice him, hello, tempt him. Cause him to do whatever you ask. And find out where his great strength lies. And by what means we may overpower him, that we may bind him to afflict him. And every one of us will give you 1,100 pieces of silver. So Delilah said to Samson, please tell me where your great strength lies and what you may be bound to afflict you. And Samson said to her, if they bind me with seven fresh bowstrings, not yet tried, then I shall become weak and be like any other man. So the lords of the Philistines brought up to her seven fresh bowstrings, not yet tried, and she bound him with them. Now the men were lying in wait, stay, staying with her in the, in the room, and she said to him, The Philistines are upon you, Samson. But he broke the bowstrings as a strand of yarn breaks when it touches fire. So the secret of his strength was not known. Then Delilah said to Samson, look, you have mocked me and told me lies. Now please tell me what you may be bound. Now why did this dude still stay there? You know, come on. He had an anointing upon him. It was phenomenal. Emotional drift. Does everybody get it? He was emotional bound to this woman. And the enticement just kept, he kept getting blinder and deafer to the voice of God. Hallelujah. So she said, so he said to her, if they bind me securely with new robes that have never been used, <laughs> this guy lied like nothing. Then I shall become weak and be like any other man. Therefore, Delilah took new robes and bound him with them and said to him, the Philistines are upon you, Samson. And the men were lying in wait, staying in the room. But he broke them off his arms like a thread. Delilah said to him, Samson, until now you have mocked me and told me lies. Tell me what you may be bound with. And he said to her, if you weave seven locks of my head into the web of the loom. So she wove it tightly <laughs> with the pattern of the loom and said to him, the Philistines are upon you, Samson. But he awoke from his sleep, pulled out the batten and the web from the loom. Then she said to him, how can you say I love you? Oh, boy, here it comes. How can you say I love you? He must have told her he loved her. Amen. Now, the, here's the, if you love me, you'll do this. Here's the emotional big drift. Double hooker. How can you say I love you when your heart is not with me? I mean, that guy should have ran like crazy. You have mocked me these three times and have not told me where your great strength lies. And it came to pass when she persisted or pestered him daily with her words, impressed him so that his soul was vexed to death. I mean, look at that. It was vexed to death. This guy was willing to die because of this emotional attachment to please this woman. That he told her all his heart and said to her, no razor is, can, has never come upon my head, for I've been a Nazareth to God from my mother's womb. If I am shaven, when my, my, then my strength will leave me, and I'll become weak and be like any other man. When Delilah saw that he had told her all his heart, she sent and called the lords of the Philistines, saying, Come up once more, for he has told me all his heart. So the lords of the Philistines came up to her, brought the money in their hand. Then she looted, lured, lured him to sleep on, his, on her knees and called for man and made him shave off the seven locks of his head. Then she began to torment him. Oh, nice girl. <laughs> and his strength left him. And she said, the Philistines are upon you, Samson. So he awoke from his sleep and said, I will go out as before at all the other times and shake myself free. But he did not know that the Lord had departed from him. 
And the Philistines took him and put out his eyes and brought him down to Gaza. They bound him with bronze of fetters and he became a grinder in the prison. <laughs> Enticed <laughs> to the drift through emotional desires. He was tormented. He was taken bondage by emotionally lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, and pride of life. But you can see the enticement bit by bit by bit. It could be subtle at first. Hey, what, what about this? What, what makes you uh, so strong? Then it was, oh, come on. Come on, tell me. Well, how come you haven't told me before? Come on, you say you love me. Oh, all the plays. This is how the enemy plays. But the end result was he became blind and bound. Amen? Ephesians 4, 17. This I say, therefore, in testifying the Lord, that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk in the fertility of their mind. Having their understanding dark and being alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart who being past feeling or emotionally taken captive. Having given themselves over to lewdness to work all cleanness with greediness. He said you've not learned Christ because if you did and you heard from him and have been, and been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus that you do what? You put off Concern you put off the concerning your former conduct the old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lusts or deceitful emotional desires and be renewed in the spirit of your mind your thoughts that you can put on the new man which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness hmm. not reach the level to overcome the emotional drift of the old man's conduct 2 Peter 1, verse 2. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge. In the what? The knowledge of God and of our Lord Jesus. As his divine power is given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue, through the knowledge of knowing him, not only reading about him, but personally knowing him, by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises, that through these you may be partakers in a divine nature. Well, look at it. If you don't know the precious promises of God Almighty, you ain't going to be able to partake in a divine nature. Having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. But also for this very reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith, virtue, virtue, knowledge, to knowledge, self-control, to self-control, perseverance, to perseverance, godliness, to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, love. For if these things are yours and abound, you will be neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For he who lacks these things is short-sighted even to blindness and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins, old habits. Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call and election sure. For if you do these things, you will never stumble. Never stumble. Hmm. You will never stumble. For so an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. People are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Revelation ins and, and prophetic insight of his promises that allows us to partake of the divine nature that supersedes the human carnal nature of emotional drift. This emotional drift brings people into darkness. Again, it's not something that cuts subtly. It's, you don't even realize it. You know, it's, it's almost like, 
I always use the car as the illustration, you know. But how about marrying someone? And everything was out beautiful, great. Then all of a sudden you begin to really find out about that person. Things that were not brought forth. Now, don't get me wrong. Everybody who gets married, they learn about each other. Amen? And there's that process of growing together and learning and so forth. But the, I'm talking about hidden things of wickedness, deception, you know, stuff to that degree. And then you realize then, man, wrong person. And then there's always promises being made. I'll change. I'll change. Believe me, I can change. It's emotional drift. But the individual doesn't change. Then there has to be a break off and a restart or reset somewhere along down the road. Amen. And, and again, and, and that's where counseling and so forth is important in the body of Christ. And sometimes the individual is the one is really not really who they truly are. And they're playing that game just to get something that they want. But sometimes there's an individual just do, struggling with things that needs help and are willing to work it out. But if you're not willing to work it out, ain't nothing going to happen. Amen? We've got to fight. The Bible says work it out. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Work it out. Amen? Oh, happy days. Go to Galatians 5 and verse 7. You ran well. Who hindered you from obeying the truth? This persuasion does not come from him who called you. A little leaven leavens the whole lump. I have confidence in you, in the Lord, that you will have no other mind, but he who troubles you, you shall bear his judgment, whoever he is. And I, brethren, if I still preach circumcision, why do I still suffer persecution? Then the offense of the cross has ceased. I could wish that those who trouble you would even cut themselves off. For you, brethren, have been called to freedom or liberty. Only do not use this freedom and liberty as an opportunity to promote the flesh. But through love serve one another. For all the laws fulfilled in one word, even in this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you bite and devour one another, beware lest you become consumed by one another. And he says, again, I say, walk in the spirit and you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. A little drift brings a, brings a big drift. Hello? <laughs> a little leaven brings a lump, but a little drift will bring more. And it brings a drift into the emotional bondage and into darkness. And you don't even realize that you're becoming blinded more and more and more. And then it close at 1 Corinthians 10 and verse 6. Now these things became our examples to the intent that we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. And do not become idolaters as were some of them. As it is written, people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Nor let us commit sexual immorality as some of them did. And in one day 23,000 fell. Nor let us tempt Christ as some of them also tempted and were destroyed by serpents, nor complained, as some of them also complained, and were destroyed by the destroyer. Now, all of these things happened to them as examples, and they were written for our admonish, upon whom the ends of the ages have come. Therefore, let him who thinks he stands take heed, lest he fall. No temptation is overtaking you except such as is common to man, but God is faithful. Who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. But with the temptation will also make the way of escape. That you may be able to bear it. Therefore my beloved flee from idolatry. 
Now, I speak as to wise men, judge for yourselves what I say. In other words, who, if you, are you going to escape if you're not hearing? No. You know, that's where you've got to be sensitive. We've got to be able to hear. We've got to be able to receive that unction. We've got to be able to hear stop when it's time to stop. Sometimes it's shut up when it's time to shut up. Hello? <laughs> Sometimes it's go when it's time to go. But again, we've got to be able to hear. Though That's why the word says take heed of what he says. It's important. Be careful the emotional drift that is so subtle, but then it begins to build. And the next thing we'll know, we're in another country. <laughs> Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. Lord, we know that we are hard-pressed on every side and all kinds of things are going on. And there's an emotional attack everywhere. We ask that you'll give us the discernment and wisdom that we may be able to be sensitive to these things and see these things through. Avoiding every emotional drift and exposing every emotional drift that we may stand strong with you in Jesus' name. Anybody said amen?